Uh, let's do this then. I need to remember again because of the new YouTube restrictions. I have to be very careful not to swear at the beginning of the video until it gets to the right point. <laughs> 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 Don't know. Thank you, YouTube, and your constant changing <clears throat> systems. It makes it very hard for people like me who swear nonstop to function and make any form of money. But hey, hey everyone, welcome to Shonen Dark Life. <laughs> I'm Woki, and I'm here with Zenrod. Good start. Hello, everybody. The greatest start ever. Boom. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. The Shonen Archive is a series in which <clears throat> me and Zen watch all Shonen Jump anime, media, video game. Well, not video games, because if we did video games, we'd be here forever. We'd have to play a lot yeah, of bad Dragon right. Ball games. Okay, we're making yeah, a stance right. here. No no video games. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, we're Hardline gonna- stance. Hard light stance of just like, okay, you, you, you're you out of the pile. Live action, Death Note, we're taking you, but we are not accepting the video <laughs> games. And me and Zen... It would be, pl- be kind of cool to have like a special episode with like jump stars or something. Oh, that would be. Okay, you know, we're talking about this off screen. Okay, we're letting you back <laughs> on the team. <laughs> Get back over here. <laughs> Shonen Jump. Games, you're, in, you're on thin ice, but you're not out yet. You're not. It's our version of the deep. <laughs> You'll be back on the team soon. <laughs> But yet, yeah, that's a series in which we cover all that, and uh, we do this until the very end of the universe itself, or until the end of our life force itself, whichever one happens first. We're in a collision course in the world. <laughs> Surely one of us will give out. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Progressively tempting fate with each intro to one of these videos. <laughs> this is my way of saying to God, like, I'd like to see you fucking try and stop my show. <laughs> Bring it you on! Know gonna do it. The thing that's gonna kill Shonen Archive is gonna be uh, terrible Sega Mondays. Oh yeah, actually, <laughs> it's gonna drain Wookie of everything he's got left. No, that's because that's also gonna drain our friendship by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, okay. Actually, now the new bit is either the universe dies, we die, or our friendship <laughs> dies because you. Because of a live stream Monday's <laughs> terrible Sega Genesis games. Whichever one of those happens first. Uh, the main series that we go through is obviously Gint- Gintama, which comes out every Saturday. And then every Sunday, usually, switching off on a two week basis, is uh, Kuroko's Basketball and Jujutsu Kaisen. And today, it's Kuroko's Basketball, seeing the three episodes that I should have seen last week, but I didn't. Because I was busy with work, and damn it, do I really regret it now, because I would have gladly watched five more episodes of Kuroko. Yeah, Kuroko's so good. Ah, oh, it's so good. So we're here to talk about episodes three, four, and five. Are you ready, Zen? Are uh, you... absolutely. This is the Shonen Archive in which you speak. Let's go. Try, I was trying to figure it out of how to figure it in because it still really bothers me <laughs> that it says this is the basketball that Kuroko plays at every single title. Yeah, uh, it's, it, yeah I don't know why it says that. Kuroko's basketball is a much better title. It is, but it, there is something mesmerizing about seeing it <laughs> in the background. But anyway, let's get started uh, with episode so... three. It's better if I can't win. Let me have this one bit zen. <laughs> I only Sorry. have one. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> It's my one. It's my one thing I contribute to the summary. <laughs> I'm useless for the rest of it. <laughs> so uh, we jump into uh, Saren moving over to Kaijo. They're gonna have a practice game with one another. Um, they meet up in the beginning, and Kisei is like, "Oh, hey, it's Kuroko. What's up?" Because he still really likes Kuroko. They're still good homies, and Kuroko's kind of like, eh, I'm neutral, I'm ambivalent toward this friendship. Um, <laughs> Kagami kind of gives him some shit, and he's like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be better than you, and Kisei's like, well, if you say so, I'm, I'm gonna be better than you. Like, I can't ignore if you're gonna call me out. Um, they get into the gym, and it's been cut in half by a net, and they said they're only gonna give them half the court for the practice game, and they're gonna let the regular practice happen on the other side, because, um, Basically, they're underestimating them. They're like, there's not there's not any benefit from us playing you, so we're just going to kind of mess around, and there wouldn't be any benefit to watching. Um, obviously, they're pretty pissed off about it. 
But then Kisei tells him, like, you know, don't don't go around saying big shit like you're going to beat the Generation of Miracles if you can't force our coach to put me in so that we don't lose. At least do that much. Um, they start playing, and the referee's like, where's your fifth guy? And Kuroko does the I'm right here joke again, which is always funny. <laughs> um, they start playing, and they actually are doing better than expected. Um, Kuroko and Kagami are kind of putting in all the work there. And then Kagami ends up dunking the ball and ripping the hoop off of the backboard because it's like an old wooden backboard uh, with a rusted screw in it. And so it rips the whole thing off. Um, They're forced to use the full court because Kagami broke the net, so they don't have any choice. And then uh, the coach also puts Kisei in just to try to, like, get them back sort of for uh, breaking the hoop and putting on a big scene. He's like, go put him in their place, basically. The game proceeds, and Kisei once again copies Kagami and copies his dunk, but he does not break the backboard, and he gets kicked by the team captain because the team, the team captain says, I thought I told you to break that shit like he did. <laughs> um, even though he doesn't break the backboard, it's a it's like a modern backboard, like plexiglass and metal and stuff, so obviously he wasn't going to break it. Um, but Kagami notes that he did, in fact, dunk the ball harder than he did even though the rim, the rim didn't break this time. Um, they all take a take a seat after three minutes to relax, and uh, the coach is like, why the hell are you all so tired after just playing for three minutes? Like, what the fuck's going on? Um, they're getting too exhausted, and so they call a timeout so that they can just kind of calm down. They're currently losing. Um, Kaijo is winning. <coughs> They talk, and Kuroko's like, oh, I uh, I actually kind of know what Kisei's weakness is. Um, or, you know, he says that I know, or I haven't told you my own weakness. Kisei says, I know what Kuroko's weakness is. And then uh, Riko hits him, and she's like, why didn't you tell us that your amazing super technique had a weakness before right now? And he's like, oh, you didn't ask. And they have, like, this funny little argument, and then the timeout ends, and she realizes all she's done for the duration of the timeout is basically punch <laughs> Kuroko, and that's it. Um, so they start playing again, and then Kagami says that he's actually figured out that Kisei's weakness is Kuroko because he can't see Kuroko just like anyone else. And so while the misdirection is active, he can't copy it because he can't watch Kuroko play. Um, and then we move on. That's where the episode ends as the, the, the game gears up between... Kisei School and Seiren. Mm. Kaijo, that's the name of Kisei Kai- School. Kaijo. Yeah, Kaijo. Uh, man, this was a... Uh, I, so, this is the episode where I started also really liking Rico. Uh, by the end of the episode 5, I was a big fan of Rico, but this actually started it, because the way she felt extremely disrespected, when that guy's like, eh, whatever, you know, they can practice, they don't really need to be seeing it. And this fat coach guy is like so much... <laughs> is extremely just like so... Man, whatever. We're gonna easily beat them, you know. Try not to let us score over a hundred. <laughs> like such an unbelievable asshole <laughs> to the people who are coming to your school. That when she was angry at him, she wanted to get back at him. I uh, ended up starting really liking her right there. But also, I ended up really liking um, the other two as well, Kuroko and Kagami, because this is where. They started doing a little bit more cool stuff. Like, obviously, you can't hate a character who dunks so hard he breaks the... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's something about a dunk, you know? Yeah, it's the same reason Slam Dunk is so good. is because almost every single one of those characters does a sick Slam Dunk. (laughs) The answer is the Slam Dunk is one of the greatest moves (laughs) in the history of sports. It's really cool. Um, I also like that bit where he's talking like, oh, you're going to have to pay that back. He's like, am I going to have to pay that back? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wonder how much that rim is going to cost. And he's like, what? Do I have to buy that? <laughs> yeah, he, didn't have, he never <laughs> even thought that far ahead. It was really funny. It also really is a good way of showing, like, Kuroko's uh, personality, because it's actually very hard to tell when he is joking or when he is actually being 100% serious. And I think the answer is usually he is 
unintentionally funny because he's being 100 percent serious every single he's being genuine whenever yeah, he's, he's always genuine but it's in a funny way because of the things that he says yeah also, like deadpan yeah it's it's really great and uh it's really funny but yeah it, they do a good job here of like showing off how even the weakest member of the generation of miracles which is what he calls him what he is considered is no laughing matter because the second he joins that game it's like Oh, borderline impossible to even really... It's like an, an uphill battle all the way up until the very last episode, trying to get him uh, in check, basically. And also, like, the end reveal of, like, saying, like, the way how we're going to beat the strongest players that we're going to use our weakest player. And also, the way he also grabs Kuroko's head is really funny, because he's like, this guy right here, he's in, he treats him like yeah, a he's dumb. Like pushing down on the top of his head, and Kuroko's like, can you stop that? Yeah, he looks very annoyed with the situation that he's under, but <laughs> really good stuff. Really good uh, ramp up to this game. When the basketball actually started, it was uh, I was entranced the entire time. I was like, oh yeah, I just need to see where the hell this basketball goes. How do you feel about this one, Zen? It's great. This whole beginning arc is like the first time we really get a taste of what actual games are going to be like, because the only game that we'd seen up to this point was, like, the uh, the first years versus second years, like, practice. introduce yourself to the team kind of practice game. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first time we really get to see them play, and it's super cool. All the plays are great. Um, and also getting a piece of the Generation of Miracles this early, because we are going to get a break. We're not just going to constantly see them. We're going to play at least a couple games where they're not present. Um is really cool as well because you can kind of see like the difference in the upcoming competition versus someone like he say later on. Yeah. And also how much he's just like <clears throat> clearly better than their, their best guy. I think they also make note of it. Rico also makes note of it. It's like, it's not just him. This entire team is better than us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is cool. It's a good, uh, underdog way of showing it off. It's very easy to cheer for the underdog and, and uh, they establish very quickly, like, oh, yeah, no. Uh, they're kind of screwed. <laughs> they can't even keep up the pace of the game. Because uh, they're going to tire themselves out. And one of their best players has also basically got a limit on what they can do. Because they'll get used to him. And also, like, I think he shows off... What, I think this is the one where he explains what misdirection is, right? Like, how what Kuroko is doing. Yeah, how it works, basically. Yeah, Yeah, it's like, well... This is how basically what he's doing, and I was like, "Oh, okay, that that makes a lot of sense." Um, also explains why he can't do it for very long because they'll they'll just eventually get used to him. If you're spending that much time with someone, eventually you will notice. So yeah, very cool episode. And now well, let's go on to the next one as we continue the game. Uh, take care of the counterattack, which is episode four. So they are continuing the game. Kaiju has the lead. Um, they decide to work on teamwork between Kuroko and Kagami in order to get around Kisei. Um, they are continuing with Kaiju in the lead with Kisei on Kagami to stop him from doing anything, only for uh, Kagami to basically use Kuroko kind of to get around Kisei, to pass around him and avoid all of the... You know, his, Kisei's defense, basically. Um, so they end up starting to progressively bridge the gap. They are not exactly caught up yet. They are not. They are certainly not in the lead, but they are catching up slowly. Um, <clears throat> right as Kisei starts to acclimate to what they're doing and kind of get used to, like, their method of attack and everything they're doing, they mix it up and they start working in uh, the team captain, Huga, who is like a three-point shooter, to also score some points as well. Kisei uh, kind of starts to reassert himself and continues putting in work. <coughs> and so they end up pulling Kagami onto defense because they're like, if we, if we keep you back, um, Kisei won't copy your moves. He's copying all of like the moves you're using on him and using them on us, and it's blowing us up. So if we're putting you on defense, then you know that, that won't happen quite as much. Um, we get into the near end of the game here. Um, 
Kuroko is benched because he also has terrible stamina. He can't, you know, be fighting for all that long. Um, <clears throat> Isn't he... Is this when he gets benched because he accidentally gets hit by Kisei? Yeah, Kisei uh, cracks him, I think, in the forehead. Yeah, uh, really, really badly. Yeah. He's bleeding out. Um, yeah, so they, they bandage him up and put him on the sidelines there. Um, <clears throat> Kisei kind of has this moment where they put Kuroko back in, and they kind of reaffirm that, like, even though Kisei's kind of flippant, he's actually very dedicated, and he doesn't intend to lose to anyone. Um, Huga makes a long shot, and the score ends up tied. And they are basically going on pure all-out offense, because neither team wants to play defense, and they're just scoring a shitload of points back and forth. Um, Kuroko comes up with a plan to get around um, Kisei's ability at the last second, and Kuroko... Tosses or Huga catches the ball, tosses it as uh, Kagami and Kuroko are running to the other side. Kuroko alley oops the ball up to Kagami, and Kisei jumps up to try to block it. And then he realizes that he is falling sooner than Kagami is, despite the fact that they jumped at the same time. Kagami's jump lasts longer. Uh, and then they end up winning the game by, I think, just one basket right at the very end they break the tie yeah it's a bu- buzz a buzz beater is what i think what they call buzzer it beater. buzzer beater yeah yeah <clears throat> it ends with them winning this was great old time this is great because this also was at, <laughs> after he gets injured i actually assumed that the game was over and they were, they were just gonna do a fast forward but they did they actually take the time to say like okay no no there are other dudes on this team <laughs> Yeah, and they give an introduction of him, which are really funny. He's like, uh, "This is the senior. He does three pointers. He's always he's the clutch. He's the guy who you get it in clutch. Here's another guy. He's really weird, but he makes weird jokes. But he's pretty good at the game. Here's another guy. No one's ever even heard him speak, and <laughs> he's the only one that doesn't speak during his introduction. And then the last guy, which is what I who I had been calling the kitty cat guy that had been in the background next to <laughs> Rico the entire time. <laughs> the guy with the kitty mouth? Yeah, the guy with the kitty mouth. And that's what I had been calling him as a kitty cat man. And then he joined the game, he was like a jack of all trades, literally master of none, it's him. And he goes like, Oh come on. I got like the worst intro out of all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was like, and thank wait, wait, is he the one? Is, I forget if this is where they do these introductions, where she's, like, playing up their team, and she's like, this guy who can do everything, and then this guy who can shoot from anywhere, but they only go in sometimes, and they're like, that's just the guy. <laughs> that's just the thing anyone can do. Yeah, I think this is one after he gets injured when she introduces all of them, which is a really f- fun <laughs> introduction. Uh, good way to introduce the other dudes on this team, because up until this point, it's really just been them two kind of, like, taking the game. <clears throat> uh and yeah it was really nice to see them i also think this is where they start saying they're senior where they start saying like because i think he says like when he starts second guessing i was like maybe you should just calm your shit and fucking listen to me <laughs> goddamn first years have no respect for their seniors <laughs> he's like he always gets like this when the game is on the line <laughs> that's when his true personality starts to come out um I like that. I like the bit where Kuroko gets uh, hit in the dome because they really show you how weak Kuroko is because he takes like one hit and he's like, I'm fine. And then he like immediately collapses. Yeah, that's where he like actually blacks out, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And he's like, oh no, that was a. Uh, any. It, if anyone would actually try to hit Kuroko and take him out, they would probably instantly win the game. Because there's no way this man is surviving a straight up, like, normal punch from one of these dudes. Um, but yeah, he gets taken out and he has to get bandaged up. And then when he joins in later, it's a nice moment of, like, I can I can play. And they actually are able to kind of reset his misdirection. Because at that point, they had been getting used to him and used to his misdirection. But then by the time he came in, it had been so long that they had, they had to get reacclimated to it again. <coughs> Uh-huh. So it was a good way to kind of show, like, oh, no, there's ways around his specific weakness that would start work out that it just means that he would not have to be in the game. 
Um, I also like when he woke up and she's like, we need Kuriko in the game if we want to stand a chance. And he just like wakes up and he's like, okay. And he starts like wandering into the car. He's like, you told me to go in coach. I'm going in. Yeah, he's like all fucked up. Like, I guess I'm going in. <laughs> I'm going in to <laughs> let me in. <laughs> I'll take him. For this I really- him. I'll do it all by myself. Clearly. <laughs> and under no circumstances should he have been allowed back in that court. <laughs> No, God, no. He was God, fucked up. He was real fucked up, so... Uh, but still, it's always a nice action one. Only in anime where you would say, like, oh, damn, look at him come back. Bring him back in there. Shows the the spirit of the person. Uh, and yeah, and I like the way that they were both teaming up and just completely fucking bypassing Kisei when they were passing back and forth and showing teamwork. Um, that was really good. Because he was showing off that, yes, your one weakness is that you have no idea where Kuroko is coming from at all. Um, and he's able to get him with, like, the most simplest of stuff of, like, just, like, jabbing gently from the back. Because <laughs> he's, like, he doesn't realize that he's behind him. <laughs> he's able to get the, the ball out of his hands and stuff like that. Really cool stuff. There's also a bit where they start playing the OP. And that's when they're starting to make their comeback. And uh, I was like, oh, this is great. But then it has the real good moment where he, like, kicks in into, like, third gear. And all of a sudden, the OP disappears. And it goes into, like, this rock theme for how good the Generation of Miracles is. And he's just, like, a fucking demon on the basketball court. (laughs) Yeah, that had big vibes of, like, like Aizen stopping Ichigo's music. Where, like, their comeback just gets stuffed. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he says they're fucking shit off again. Yeah, I was like, damn. Yeah, that, it's another a good showing off of, like, no, there's a clear gap difference between them. And that one bit is showing, like, oh, if he was actually maybe going... one, If he was always going like this, they probably wouldn't have stood a chance, but he was going at it. He was not going to that level, so... Man, really good episode. What would you end up feeling about it, Zen? Uh, it's really good. I really like this opening match with Kisei because I really like Kisei as a character. Um, I think he establishes the Generation of Miracles really well. Um, and he kind of establishes the the conflict that Kuroko has throughout the remainder of this. Because, you know, Kagami's whole thing is I want to beat the Generation of Miracles and I want to be the best. Um, which is, you know, pretty standard sports guy protagonist thing for a sports manga. Just I want to be the best guy at the sport. Mm-hmm. Um, the conflict for Kuroko is a little bit different because he obviously has absolutely no shot at being the best, right? Like, he's just garbage except for this one skill that he has. Um, so his conflict ends up being, like... He, he kind of alluded to it earlier where he's like, you know, the, the place I played basketball in middle school, I, I didn't like the way that they did things. Um, and that's why I came here. Because I wanted to, you know, not be with that kind of vibe. Um <clears throat> And part of the the way they beat Kisei is that Kisei is working alone and they're working together. So, like, teamwork is a big deal. It allowed them to overcome him, even if it wasn't a real game. And, you know, you don't know that he was playing fully or whatever. Um, Kuroko's conflict throughout the story is sort of establishing to these people who think that, you know, they're the shit and they're the greatest and that it's all about winning that it's more important to enjoy what you're doing and enjoy the people that you're doing it with than it is about, you know, asserting yourself as the the greatest or the best or whatever. Um, And I like the way that they play this with Kisei here, where Kisei kind of keeps pushing back, and even though he really is that good, ultimately that teamwork between Kagami and Kuroko allows them to pull through. Um, It's really fucking good. It's really good. Really good. Uh, and then I'll also say this epilogue uh, end bit screen, which I I forgot to mention beforehand before we move on, is also, um, I think it's uh, Kisei holding up Kuroko and holding him in his arms while he's holding a basketball in the other arm. Um, I wanted to bring this up because it's like, if there was ever a clearer sign that this would be really, really popular with the people who really like Yuri, there's no real... Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, I've never yeah, seen... Not, yeah, it's there. It's there. Oh, it's 100% there. They know what they're doing. Because, like, listen, you can see them looking eye to eye here and tell me that there isn't at least something you could write a story about here. <laughs> Very easy. 
I just felt like bringing it up because I also realized that we have a lot of uh, the one thing in common between uh, Gintama and Kuroko is that there's a big heavy <laughs> emphasis on Yuri, mm-hmm. which is funny. <laughs> All right, let's move on to episode five, which is called Your Basketball, which is, of course, the basketball which Kuroko plays is your basketball. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, episode five, Your Basketball. That is a really funny name, considering the... <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the wiki, the title picture is actually even the basketball which Kuroko plays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Kisei is kind of uncomfortable with the fact that he lost, because he never loses. Um... We meet another generation of Miracles member. Uh, I don't remember if they say his name. I think Kisei they says do. his they, name, doesn't they, they say his yeah, name. Yeah, Mitarima. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and they kind of have this little back and forth where Mitarima's like, wow, I can't believe you lost. And he's like, oh, you know, they're, they're better than you think, and yada, yada. Um, they end up going to a steakhouse to celebrate, and they sort of uh, come back around to, like, Kuroko's backstory, and um, they talk about, like, you know, I was in middle school, I kind of hated playing with them, um, even though they were my friends, because just the vibe of everything was just, it was it was bad. Um, you know, it was all emphasis on winning, no emphasis on anything else. Um, <clears throat> sorry. No and he just wasn't he wasn't up for it and he wanted to sort of restart somewhere else and it's why he ended up not going to like a big name school like any of the other generation of miracles players did um they end up having this little talk between Kisei and uh Kagami and like you know eventually you're gonna you know, like, it's all fun and games and teamwork right now, but you may not realize or may, like, how much better than them that you are. And the better that you get, the more and more ostracized you're going to become. Eventually, you're going to outgrow them. You're going to feel like they're holding you back. All this, you know, kind of, like, borderline anime villain speech of, like, you're, you know, Kagami is way better than everyone. And no matter what, like, they're not going to catch up. Like, he's naturally talented. He's naturally gifted. It's not going to work out the way that you think it's going to work out. Um, and then we see some, like... I, I think they're they're adults. They're supposed to be adults. Um, like, hustling these people at basketball in a little, like, outdoor court. And they're, like, outplaying them and kind of being shitty about it and treating them bad. Cheating and as well. Kuroko, do they hit them? Yeah, that's where they says like I thought it was going to be a three versus three, and he's like, N- "We never said that. We just said we were going to play basketball." And so the other dudes are starting to interfere with the the game and hitting them and stuff. Yeah, and then Kuroko goes in and he kind of tells him off. Um, he's like, "You know, you're, why don't you play fair? Why don't you not be shitheads about basketball if you really like it and all that stuff?" Uh, and it forces Kisei and Kagami to kind of intervene on his behalf because he's a small little man. <laughs> getting into <laughs> big situations. Yep. Um, he also had sneaked off away from them. <laughs> yeah, because they were they were all fighting. Because I think the conversation starts with Kisei and Kuroko, and then Kagami comes up as well. Yeah, Kam- Kagami comes up. And joins the conversation. Up. Yeah, he yeah. kind of joins it in the middle. Um, and then, yeah, he just leaves while they're talking to each other. And so they have to go in and kind of interject on his behalf, and they end up playing the bullies uh, in basketball. And I think they tell them, you can bring whoever, like, as many people as you want. We don't care. Yeah. Um, and they end up trouncing them. And I th- isn't Kisei in, like, a suit? He's he, not even, he like, is. wearing it. Yeah. He's <laughs> wearing his button-up and, like, khakis. Yeah, his um, model outfit. Yeah, and they end up trouncing the bullies and kind of leaving with a, a little bit of newfound respect between Kisei and Kagami, where Kisei kind of learns a little bit of... He get, gets a piece of humble pie... He kind of learns that he, he's not the shit that he thinks he is, and he might need to reevaluate a little bit. Um, and Kagami gets a newfound respect for the generation of miracles because he was kind of talking big shit on them 
up to this point, and now he realizes that, you know, he's vastly outclassed by Kisei in a one-on-one situation, and Kisei is supposedly the weakest one. So we get the the little realization that his what he expects to be an easy goal, because he kind of also thinks he's the shit at first, is mm-hmm. not particularly attainable right now without Kuroko's help. Mm-hmm. And the episode ends with my favorite moment, which is uh, Rico putting um, Kuroko in the leg lock in in a Boston crab, a.k.a. the walls (laughs) of Jericho. (laughs) She promised that when she found him, she was going to put him in a Boston crab. And God damn it, she promised. (laughs) She delivered what she promised. She puts him in a Boston crab as everyone else silently walks away. (laughs) Yeah, they all just leave them. And Kuroko's like, help me. (laughs) He's like, please. (laughs) Please and they all just leave. Yep, yeah, they all leave him behind to just take the Boston Crab. And yeah, this episode, it was... I really like this episode because it's a lot of setting up of some character stuff after the game. Um, I really like the bit with Kisei where he starts crying after he's, he loses. Because he really didn't expect to lose that game. Uh, and he's absolutely devastated by it and shocked, as uh, we've said previously. I like seeing the next guy from Generation of Miracles. He was in the previous episode where he was being like carted around. And... Yeah, he was in the the cart with the guy driving him on the bike. Yeah, and he said like uh, we would be there already if you weren't um, if you weren't if, if, if you, we were supposed to switch off places, but his horoscope said that he would be in good condition so he doesn't do it and he's like we would already be there if it wasn't for your damn (laughs) oracle and he also talks about it a little bit here and he shows his lucky frog which he says would be his good luck item and then they do a giant close-up shot of the frog (laughs) with him behind him which i really recognize the green-haired guy's voice (sighs) he sounded so familiar uh who's his voice actor Daisuke Ono, baby. It's Jotaro Kujo. <laughs> really? That mean- Okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it's like he's- so, fun fact, there's actually a shitload of uh, JoJo voice actors in Kuroko. Really? Yes. Um, hang on, let me pull up a list. Because there's at least, like, I think there's... Okay, so Kuroko himself is a JoJo. That's Jorno. Mm-hmm. That's Kensho Ono. Um, we have Daisuke Ono, obviously, as Mitarima. And then I believe that Josuke is also someone. Um, hang on. No, I obviously don't want the English one. <laughs> uh, it's Kagami. Kagami is Josuke. Really? So, Kuroko is Giorno, Kagami is Josuke, and Midorima is Jotaro. Wow, hell of a meeting of the JoJo's. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. It's pretty great. Um, but yeah, I liked his introduction, and I liked how he said, like, if I'm feeling the luckiest, I'll never lose any of my shots. And he's like, I don't, that's never made any sense. Like, it's like he says that, he's like, that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Yeah, so each of the Generation of Miracles has, like, a gimmick. It's like their power, basically. So yeah. this is where Kuroko gets kind of the super-powered basketball thing from. Um, they all have their, their gimmick superpower, and that guy's is, as long as he follows his daily horoscope, uh, he always lands his shots. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would make a lot of sense then. Yeah, much of uh, the way that Kisei is, is like, his copying, his, his Sharingan, it, basically. Yes, and uh, Kuroko's is his... Um, yeah, his misdirection. Misdirection. And we'll figure out the rest when we get there. But yeah, I like that Kami part. We'll eventually get one as well, too. Yeah, because they, they mention in here, because um, that's the conversation that him and Kuroko are having, is that he sees Kagami, Kagami as being, basically, he has the same abilities as the Generation of Miracles. It's just starting out, though. Um, and it will come to pass that eventually what will happen is that what will happen to him is what happened to the generation of miracles, which is that he'll become too good for the team. And at that point he'll be kind of shunned and he won't really have a place on the team anymore because he's just so much better than the rest of them that he won't be able to actually enjoy playing with them. Um, and that's when uh, Kagami also eventually shows up and he starts having words with Kisei as they go back and forth. Um, 
and Kusei is in general very curious about Kuroko's plans, which is to make Kagami the best uh, b-ball man possible. Which actually ended up reminding me that at this point I realized, like, oh, actually, if you think about it, um, both Kuroko and Kagami are kind of based off of Red Oni and Blue Oni. If you ever, mm-hmm. um, if you're unaware of what that is, it's the story of the Red Oni and the Blue Oni is that the Red Oni was wanting for friendship and what happened is that the blue oni basically had to came up with a plan so that the red oni would be able to make friends with a local village and only through the actual sacrifice of the blue oni not being able to have be with the red oni anymore was he able to actually like fulfill his dream and his promise and so at this point when he's talking about this he's like oh yeah eventually he will just get away from everyone it kind of did remind me of that a little bit because that's kind of what his current plan is is that to make him the best and they actually share very similar uh, characteristics to him like the red oni is supposed to be one that's all emotion very passionate while the blue is supposed to be very calm and very collected and be more of a plans focused kind of guy so i was like oh i think obviously probably not based off of that story 100% because I don't know where their eventual story is going but I can definitely see some of the similar parallels right there Um, so it makes me wonder if it was on purpose or not or if maybe it's just one of those things of like oh yeah this guy's red and this guy's blue (laughs) Because one has red hair, one has blue hair. And yeah, then, it's pretty pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah. But either way, it was like that moment, I was like, oh, maybe it's a little bit based off of that. And seeing some of that and seeing a little bit of him kind of talking about it made me feel a little bit more like, oh, I could see them kind of being based off of that specific story, if that's the direction that they kind of go. But we'll see as we continue on, because I don't know where the series go. This is just me, in general, thinking out loud right here. But yeah, I really like this episode, and obviously when Kuroko stands up to those dudes and he's like, what was your game plan here if uh, they started attacking? He's like, oh, I would immediately get destroyed. He's like, check out my guns, and he does like a, he does like a look at these guns, and he does like a little curl. He's like, obviously I would be destroyed. Check, look at these guns. And then they go like, you are an idiot. <laughs> You're... <laughs> Your entire plan was basically that you were just going to get your ass kicked. <laughs> um, and yeah, I also like the stuff with the, where they're going, where they're uh, before anything, before they're out to go celebrate, they actually go check on Kuroko at the doctors to see that he's okay. And after they get the okay that he can still play basketball, everyone's like, yeah, we won. <laughs> they had to make sure that they just leave. They're like, all right. <laughs> yeah. And they realize, like, oh, let's go celebrate, but they're broke. Ah, <coughs> 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 oh, shit, sorry, my bad. Oh, fucking sneezing fit. <laughs> anyway, when they realize that they're, um, they're broke and they see the free steak and they have to eat it all, and then her plan is basically like, well, you're just going to eat it all, right? Everyone's so- going to eat it all, yeah. I think doesn't they end up failing, and then Kagami's like, I got this. Yeah, he's like, oh, I could eat more. I was going to order some more. He just ends up eating all their steak, which is really funny because when they mention uh, <laughs> Kuroko like a minute in is like, I give up. He like instantly gives up after like yeah, he a- takes like one or two bites. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. So they get saved by Kagami, and then my f- my favorite bit is at one point when they all start giving up. They they <laughs> they go like, "What are we gonna do to pay for all this?" And they do a quick shot to the shotgun that's <laughs> on top of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> And then, thankfully, Kagami saves them by eating just a shit ton of meat, just like nonstop. Of course, the Burger Boy, who's known for eating uh, the big burger burgers. Burger King, if you will. Yes, yeah, the Burger King. He's also the Steak King. Uh, and then when they're leaving, he's like, oh, thank you for the steak. And then the guy goes, never come back here again. <laughs> <laughs> Get the hell out of here. It reminded me of the 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 Dutchman from Simpsons with Homer. He's an eating machine. <laughs> he's <laughs> kicks him out of the all all you could eat buffet because he was breaking bank trying to eat him there but i really like that bit and yeah and uh like i said previously boston crab really good there's a lot of good character moments after a very intense basketball game which that game was awesome and it was a good way of kind of like bringing down from that and kind of getting to know characters a little bit more and hear their motivations and stuff i was very actually kind of i was actually very surprised that they had won the game I would have, uh, I wouldn't have been, I was more, I was expecting them to lose, especially after all that stuff, but they were able to just barely win, 
Um, which makes me feel like th- eventually when their loss actually comes down, it's going to be really devastating. <laughs> Eventually, I will not spoil. You, yeah, don't don't those spoil. Words are, those words are there. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. It's coming eventually. It, it always has to come in any sports. Mo- it's the most devastating loss is the first loss. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a really good uh, episode and really established a lot of character stuff that made me interested to continue on. And I would have, I felt like continuing on, uh, but we had to stop for this time and I'll continue on two weeks from now. <laughs> So, tell me how you feel about this, Zen. Fantastic episode. All the character stuff is great. Um, I really like every generation of Miracles character, so I, like, I find Mitoriyama very funny, so I enjoyed seeing him. Um, I like, basically, the dynamic with the Seiren team. I, I'm going to just say, end up saying I like all the characters. I don't think there's any character that I dislike, especially not this early on. Mm-hmm. Um, the Steakhouse bit's really funny. Especially when, uh, like you said, Kuroko just gives up instantly. He's like, I'm not interested in <laughs> continuing to eat this meat. I'm done. Um, and I really liked the bit where they kind of team up to beat the bullies. Because, you know, they've been at odds this whole time. And even just a moment before that, Kisei was kind of like, you know, this is a cute little thing you're doing, but it's all going to blow up in your face. And he was kind of not being a dick about it, but he was being very, like, shooting them down, sort of. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the team up against the bullies was cool. It was just nice to see them kind of teaming up like that and Kisei kind of coming around because he ends up being the friendliest member of the Generation of Miracles toward them as this goes forward. Uh, so it's it's good. It's real good. <laughs> I also did like when um, Kisei mentions to Kuroko because um, when he's talking to Midorama he says like, oh no, we, would, we wouldn't vibe. Our alignments never <laughs> oh, are never you know, known to be our chakra planets or whatever don't yeah, ever are never <laughs> align never line up properly and then Kisei later tells Kuroko like oh Murderama was there he's like oh I really don't get along with that guy <laughs> 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 thought that was a very funny moment it, fe- it felt like I don't know if it's a specific like oh they actually legitimately don't get along or if it's literally that guy is on purpose avoiding Kuroko so Kuroko's like I don't know man just doesn't like me <laughs> The vibes are off. The, the vibes are atrocious. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it was really funny. So a good three episodes then. Man, Kuroko's a yeah, hell really of a series. Stuff. Yeah, it's starting off this strong. You know it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see more. Um, really wish we had seen this last week, so that means I would have been able to see five more. But, yeah, you it would know, be a ten instead of five, but yeah. alas... Alas, damn my work schedule. Speaking of, I have a crazy <laughs> busy work schedule next week, so we'll see how that works oh, out. Uh, Jutsu in the next casualty. No, no, I'll make sure to see it come hell or high water. No amount of, no amount of work will stop me. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't tell my bosses that. <laughs> Be real and don't tell don't them tell that. Tell the boss I said that, please. Yeah, just don't tell him. I was like, have you been, have you been watching Kuroko on the dime again? It's like, no, I'm totally, <laughs> I'm just waiting. Totally not watching Kuroko's basketball. No, right I, to- now. I totally didn't give myself the easy question, so all I had to do was wait for everyone else to finish, and I could just watch <laughs> Kuroko in the back while I wait. <laughs> totally didn't do that. That's insane. But yeah, that's it for this week, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Kuroko's basketball, really good really good we have all three of the series that we're watching are uh great because they're all <laughs> really good we need to stop this and watch something really shitty for next time <laughs> when, yeah i need to have one that we hate and we're like oh god this is fucking terrible this is absolutely garbage we need to see you know what we need to see for the next garbage one which is probably after jujutsu kaisen and zero um we should see the really shitty netflix death note movie because i'm afraid that they're eventually oh, the, gonna... the american one yeah because i'm afraid that actually eventually they're gonna get that off of the service so we need to see that before <laughs> i gotta take it down we yeah get rid of this. We, uh, you know ever since hbo max started doing the whole like i guess things can just go off forever and it's making me go like oh no Eventually, Netflix is going to catch on because they're like in a super money saving mode. We need to do this episode before it becomes a real pain in the ass to go look for this. <laughs> and that'll give us a good a good break and actually allow us to shit on something for once. 
Well, both of us, because the only time you were able to shit on uh, Dragon Ball superheroes while I was uh, enjoying it with D Free. But I need to also have that experience too, Zen. It ain't fair. <laughs> I also, you like... also need to shit on things. Exactly. We need to get, get an example of the absolute worst. And unfortunately, it takes too long to get to the terrible parts of Toriko anime. <laughs> Yeah, it, Toriko's actually really good until it is not anymore. So yeah, until there's a there's a clear part where the anime takes mm-hmm. a nosedive. So I we'll have to figure that out. But in general, it's good that we've been seeing so many good things. It just goes to show that there's plenty of good Shonen Jump anime out there. You just gotta open your mind and allow yourself to see it. And with that word, I will now do the sign-off bit. As always, you can find Zen over on his channel where he does Shonen and Show with the Ocean Man, where he talks about all the stuff that is not all that you actually don't talk about every single thing that's in Shonen Jump, right? No, we don't. We talk about like uh, the ones that we read, basically. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because I was going to say, wait, well, that would mean that you were, you were reading Black Clover. No, we don't read Black Clover. We don't read Black Clover or One Piece. So half of the people that would have gone over there are already gone. <laughs> Damn, that that you know, you're losing a lot leaving one piece on the table there. You could I would have enjoyed an entire year of you going and then Luffy punches uh Kaido and we go we'll join us in two weeks when he does another punch on Kaido and flashback. <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> And now we're here somewhere else. It would have been a glorious entire year. It would have felt like an infinite Tsukuyome as you talk about like I can't believe that this arc is still fucking going on. <laughs> And this is coming yeah, from someone I hear that shit uh, never ended. No, oh well, my it god! Did eventually, it but didn't... it lasted for like six years, dude. It okay again? I'm a One Piece fan, so don't fucking come at me if you're gonna be like, oh, you know, whatever. Wookie's coming at. I, I fucking love One Piece. Wano started pre-pandemic, and it ended three years later, <laughs> where the where people started. <laughs> saying the pandemic was over i spent the entire pandemic waiting for fucking kaido to get got i it was such a long time to the point where there was like flashbacks in it and these flashbacks are important to the story but then the flashback would end and it'd be like oh yeah he's fighting kaido (laughs) i forgot (laughs) oh he's still fighting kaido that's right that's what we were doing off last year it was a crazy fucking three years it must have been this must have been what it felt like if for someone who was actually reading namek at the time uh where you're going like damn like i'm enjoying this uh frieza man getting beat up but at the same time holy shit this argument has been going on for a really long time <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's too long well i probably would feel that more in the anime sense because i think the anime it's actually no the anime for one piece of cut is still going on i think they're still very far away from the actual end bit of what everyone wants to see <laughs> in the in the One Piece fight. But anyway, you don't cover One Piece. It's okay. We'll get there eventually, I swear to you. Uh, enjoy a five-year-long series. Oh, if we wish. There's actually is a cut-up version of One Piece, but no, nah, we ain't doing it that way. We're going to see the entire thing. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way. Oh, We're seeing no. all the thousand. There's there's actually someone who's done a very, very thoughtful recutting of the anime so that you only see the important bits. Nah man. <laughs> That's not what this show's about. <laughs> I want all of it. <laughs> this show is about objective misery. Yes. Oh the misery. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> When One Piece starts, that's when I say, remember all those Genesis Mondays, motherfucker? (laughs) Welcome to (laughs) Romance Dawn. (laughs) Can't wait for that. Yep. And if you want some more me stuff, you can always follow me on my YouTube, which is right here where you're watching this. Or uh, go to the Twitch where I now do streams on Monday with Zen as we play for you. Uh, terrible gen- terrible to slash questionable qualities of Genesis games. I really do feel like well, we, my- haven't, we haven't played uh, Vector Man yet, so don't don't gas it too much here. I'm not, yeah, I'm going to gas up my one hope, or otherwise I'm just going to be like, I can't believe I fucking got God again. I'm going to be like that old man from pa- <laughs> for Pawn Stars who's uh, like, it got me again! <laughs> Damn it, Zed got me well, again! I, ho- I hope that you like it because you're playing Vector Man 2 afterward regardless of if you liked it or not. <laughs> so... If, if, if Vectorman ends up being a complete shit show, then next week we're going to be doing uh, Marvel Snap <laughs> versus Battle Streams. It's so I can have a week break until I jump back in if it's that bad. But we'll see. 
Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>